greetings as we said that there has to be transparency transparency creates the trust that the community needs to build and to go forward the release of the body camera footage is a must the release of the body camera footage as soon as possible is a must to build the transparency that is needed in our community. Many times it is not the act, but it's what we do after the act that determines who and what we are. And if we fail, if we fail, if the sheriff's department fails, if the district attorney office fails to release that body camera to provide the transparency that this community needs to move forward, then we cannot build trust and therefore justice cannot be done. Accountability is a very integral part of justice. Again, it is a tragedy. It is sad that the Sheriff's Department has not addressed this community. The Sheriff's Department has not reached out to the leadership in the black community. The Sheriff's Department has failed to create the transparency and the trust that is needed in order to have accountability in order to move justice forward. And again, on behalf of the Pasquotank branch of the NAACP, as well as the State Conference of the NAACP, we give our heartfelt condolences to the family and to let this community know that we will be seeking justice. The, uh, the district attorney has uh, uh, vowed to us transparency and uh, a accountability uh, in this matter. Uh, we await to see what that accountability is. Uh, we heard it before. Uh, don't know him. Uh, he was elected by this county, uh, by this judicial circuit, and we'll wait to see uh, what happens from here. Uh, Andrew had seven children, all right, and some others uh, may not have been biologically his, but he took care of them. They are fatherless, fatherless today. That we do know. They'll never see their dad again. He won't see, walk his daughters down the aisle. He won't be there. And that came to the hands of law enforcement. And we don't know what happened. And the reason why we don't know what happened because nobody's telling us what happened and showing the video, the body camera, that would be the objective evidence to show what happened. If it's wrong, it's wrong. There's nothing going to change. If they're justified, they were justified. Nothing's going to change. The video is not going to change. Hopefully it don't. But accountability needs to take place. And what the justice look like in these type of cases. If criminal acts took place, no matter if you wear a badge, star, or shield, if you commit an act, if you commit a crime in the United States, in the state of North Carolina, in the county of Pasqua, in the city of Elizabeth City, you must be brought to justice. A prosecution, a conviction, a sentence. That will equal justice for us. It's not about any set sum of money. Not about that. It's about for us at large, the people to stand to stop the unlawful killing of citizens. But black males are targeted, black people of color are targeted Police tends to shoot and ask questions later. And a lot of times when you start asking questions, they don't want to give the answers. But today is a different day. We're going to demand it and we will receive it. Um, also, Mr. Horton, you have anything to say? Thank you so much for this opportunity. Two days ago, our nation was in turmoil, but now that has come to Elizabeth City, and I come today to stand as an advocate for our city and, of course, an advocate for the Brown family in requesting our local sheriff to provide these body camera footage. It's not an option. It's something that needs to take place as expeditiously as possible as we as a grieving community, not just this grieving family, these fatherless children now. We need answers. And part of getting these answers is the accountability of releasing this body footage so I'm here today to stand with the family, to stand with our community, 
to stand with our NAACP, these attorneys, as we try to make sure that we get justice and we get answers for this family. Thank you. All right. Is there, is there any questions? Yeah, so, so, All right. Go. Uh, Griff Jenkins, Fox News Channel. Okay. You want the camera footage released as soon as possible. They're, they're, you're inside. What are they telling you about whether they might eventually do it? Or are they telling you anything? And also, what do you anticipate you may see on that video? Uh, it's been held close to breast, so there's no re indication. It's been speculation, rumor, as you can see a lot of times. There's no real indication of when it will be released. Uh, we have multiple witnesses to uh, appear to have witnessed this shooting, and based on what these witnesses are saying, we expect to see an unlawful, unjustified killing of Mr. Brown. And specifically to the point that, that Mr. Brown was not armed? To my understanding, Mr. Brown was not armed, and the bullets entered into the back of the vehicle is as it, though he was leaving the scene. Is it fair to call it unlawful when we don't know the answers, though? Well, based, uh, he just answered the question as to what, what I uh, tend to see on the video based on the witnesses that said that he was not armed and he was fleeing. That is unlawful. It's my understanding they were serving a search warrant. But do you know that's, in, in relation to what? That's, that's, that's my understanding they're serving a search warrant. And we don't know if that search warrant was ever executed after he was shot and killed. Have you had a chance to talk to the sheriff yet? No, I have not spoken to the sheriff. I spoke to the, the chief of uh, prosecuting office. Do you plan to meet with the sheriff and ask him? We definitely, we definitely would like to meet with the sheriff. We would like to meet with any government official who was willing to speak with us concerning this matter. This is definitely something that the family would want to do. So I, my understanding is people have made... Uh, uh, attempts to speak to the sheriff, and he chose not to speak with him. Can you talk about how this is for the family right now? I'm sorry? Can you talk about how this has been the last 24 hours for the family? How it's been for the family? Yeah, uh, the father had been killed? I think I think you can probably imagine how, how it's been for the family. Any, any other questions? Talk to you about who you met with inside just now and, and kind of what came from that. Because it still sounds like you guys know just as little as we know. So uh, what actually has transpired? Uh, we, uh, we met with the DA, uh, Andrew Wumble. Uh, he gave assurance of his accountability that he would be accountable and hold his oath of office. If anybody who's violated the law, that he would do his due diligence. He's not a police from his position. He's not a district attorney for the police. He's a district attorney for the people. Uh, understanding that some things that he knows he may not want to give to us at this time because it is an ongoing investigation, uh, as my experience. But at the same time, this is something that is a different uh, beast, so to say, that they may not be uh, completely uh, adapted to. But nevertheless, uh, this is something that is, is urgent uh, in this community for this community to know what happened to one of their citizens. Did members of the family join you in this meeting with the DA? Or? Uh, I'm not going to speak to them this time. You know the question? In terms of demonstration, I know uh, uh, President Rivers mentioned maybe something today at 5 o'clock, but can you talk to us about what you intend to do about uh, having your voice heard? You want to speak to that? We will continue to move forward with peaceful protests, but not, as John Lewis said, it will be good trouble. Um, as, the, as, the, as you, the media, continue to um, broadcast this over, um, it is reaching different levels, uh, different people are coming in from outside. So we will continue to move forward until we hear from the sheriff. We have not heard from the sheriff. And we need to hear from the sheriff. He does have, um, so he can release these body cameras. He, okay. Uh, yeah, and that's one thing, that's a good point, that the sheriff is the custodian of those body cameras. Here's the one who is holding the body cameras, the footage. Now, the district attorney will make a strategic decision as to his investigation as a potential prosecution as to what he want to release. But at minimum, the sheriff can release the body footage to the family. The family will, be, will get an opportunity to see the footage before the, the public or the media at large will see it. Is the FBI not in control of this now? Is the sheriff is still the custodian He's a, of that video? It's not the FBI now? The FBI is leading the investigation, but the sheriff is still the custodian of the evidence. At this time. And in addition to the, to the body camera footage, you mentioned the, the trust in, in the end in law enforcement here and needing accountability and transparency to rebuild that. I can, I, can you come a little closer? 
In addition to the body camera footage, you mentioned trust and needing transparency and accountability for that. Is there anything else you all would out call for to rebuild that trust outside of this footage, whether that's action or policy or something else in that front? Well, Mr. Horton. Yes, sir. I'm from Atlanta. Uh, I'm here uh, to represent this family at the utmost. Uh, I'm not from this community. Uh, Mr. Horton is an elected official in this community, so he can ask that question. Well, thank you so much. As an elected official, my response to that question would be simple, that the body camera footage is the first step. And from us receiving that footage, then we know as a community how we need to move forward. Whether this was a justified shooting or where it was a wrongful shooting. And for as, as far as my office is concerned, that's how we'll move forward after we see that footage. But that is the first step, and we demand the sheriff to release that footage as soon as possible. Is there anything you can, is there anything you can do as a city council member to compel him to do that? Or is it I, up to the I, county? Or? Well, I think it's up to him as his office as a duly elected official as well. Uh, that, that, you know, he has custody of that footage, and from my understanding, he is the one that, not the district attorney, but him himself, is the one that can make that decision whether or not that footage can be released. At least that's what, what's the legal, At least that's what we're being told. What's the legal um, justification that's for not allowing anyone else to see the body cam footage, and what's the reason you've been given? Well, uh, legal justification, one thing, when you have an incident as such, uh, you have an investigation that take place. Uh, and the investigation is very pertinent, not just for investigation of what uh, what happened, but investigation as relates to a criminal prosecution. Uh, but for as a legal standard as relates to a video being released, uh, I think North Carolina have different laws as it relates to when a video can be released. But this issue, uh, as you can see across the nation, you can imagine if a George Floyd video was not released, or you can imagine some of the other videos, the Rain White video was not released, and so many others, what type of unrest would come. And I'm hoping that these elected officials here in this county will take note. Take note, no matter how bad it is, transparency is the one, the first step, as Mr. Horton stated, towards accountability and, and, and strengthening the ties with the government and its citizens. Just a follow-up, do you know when someone impartial or the DA is going to be able to do the I'm sorry? Do you know when someone who's impartial To my understanding, the district attorney has viewed the video. Did the district attorney tell you that he had viewed the video? He sure did. He so did. People other than the sheriff at this point have viewed the video that has not been offered to the Brown family. The district attorney has reviewed the video. I don't believe he reviewed the video in its entirety based on the conversation we have had, but he has viewed the video. And you mentioned at the top uh, that multiple deputies, you believe, shot at Mr. Brown. I know that during the uh, press conference there wasn't much information. But they did say that the deputy. Yeah, it, it was, and I've, I've, I've saw that press conference uh, and implied it was one deputy. It was three deputies. All three of them on currently on administrative leave. And all three deputies, do we know, um, used their, their weapon? To my understanding, they did. And are all three from the same county or are, are any from their county? Uh, I don't believe, I believe all of them from, from this county, uh, from this county. So I don't believe they're from any outside agency. So three officers involved. I'm sorry to interrupt you. Yesterday were part of some sort of drug task force? No, I do not. Have they identified the deputies to, to you guys at least? No. no. I was in there. Yeah. Yep. I apologize for this, but for those who are right, could you just say your names again so we get it right? Harry Daniels, uh, Attorney Harry Daniels. I'm the lead counsel for the Brown family. This is Chantel Lassiter. She's a local counsel here in North Carolina. This is our president, NWACP, Mr. Rivers, Keith Rivers, and his city councilman, Darius Horton. As it relates to protesting or Yeah, I'll let Ms. Lasser ask that question. Thank oh. you. Good morning. I am local to Pasadena St. County, and the message to the youth, Mr. Brown had children. He had youth. He had um, young, uh, young adults that he was caring for. So the message to the youth would be to hang on to your values and to pay attention. And that is kind of what they were doing yesterday. They were paying attention. 
the more they pay attention, the more they will learn and we can prevent tragedies, hopefully, in the future in this area. Any other questions? I have one. Councilman, you talk they sound like more like two now. <laughs> <laughs> Councilman, to the council, can you talk about just what this already in just less than 36 hours here has done here in city? How this is sort of reverberated through the community? Well, well, I would start off by saying that we consider ourselves the harbor of hospitality. Uh, we're a small, loving community. I believe that we bond together. And the unanswered questions, the lack of transparency, the possible lack of accountability has caused a cloud of gloom over our community. Uh, there are so many persons who are hurt by the incident, but they're troubled by the lack of information. So to answer your question, it has caused much pain and much sorrow. And I always say that hurt people hurt people but I'm hoping in this situation that hurt people will help heal people. So that's what I'm looking for. Thank you. Any other questions? Nothing else? All right, thank you guys. Appreciate it. Thank you.